We've still got plenty of racing left this season, but already plans are in place for the 2019-2020 season. Here's what we've got coming up on this edition of HK Direct. And we're going to be looking at the licensing committee announcements as to who will be riding in Hong Kong next season. I'm Edward Sadler, he's Graham Cunningham, and Graham, it's been a big news day here in Hong Kong racing. Certainly has, Edward. Pleasure to be here, as always. Very significant day for some people coming in next season, and one or two people who won't be here. Let's reveal who's in, who's out for season 2019-2020. These were the announcements from the licensing committee that came through on Thursday afternoon here in Hong Kong. And big news with Jay Moreira coming back as a club jockey full-time next season. Outside of that, for those given a full season licence, no real surprises? No mighty shocks. Remember this day last year when it was like a grenade had gone off. We had Brett Preble out of the door. We had Olivia Deleuze out of the door. Most of all, Joe Moreira. Joe is in great form at the moment. And next year, he will be free to roam as a club jockey. And that makes him very dangerous. A number of riders coming in for shorter stints as well next season for six months and also up until the end of the year. Big news, Blake Shin, Lyle Hewitson licensed up until February. Elder de Mayer, Neil Caron get to stay. Regan Bayless is here with Alberto Santa till the end of the year. The name that's missing, no, no, Martin Harvey. Yeah, Martin has had a, a busy time. He's had four winners. It's just gone against him this time, but he's young enough to come back. If he has a good trot back in Europe, you never know. But the big news is clearly for the, for the high-profile arrivals, Blake Shin and Lyle Hewitson. What do you make of their arrivals and their potential impact on Hong Kong racing? Well, I'm just trying to stack this up. And it, it seems to me that the, the jockey club are making um, an investment both for now and for the medium and perhaps the long term. Blake Shin is a ready-made, high-profile jockey, more than 20 Group 1 winners, very colourful backstory. Just over 30 now, so in the prime of his career, he's ready to go. And as for Lyle Hewitson, 21 years of age, he's very young. He's younger than all the apprentices here in Hong Kong, Edward, but his uh, achievements already have been very significant. And he's the type of guy who, if he builds some momentum, he could be a very significant player here over the years. Well, let's get more information then about one of the new arrivals to Hong Kong Racing. Of course, Blake Shin, top jockey in Australia, will be joining the riding ranks for the next season. He joins us on the line. Uh, Blake, I know you've had aspirations to ride overseas before. You must be wrapped to get the news through that you'll be joining us here in Hong Kong next season. Yes, Ed, I'm, um, you know, I'm extremely uh, honoured to get the opportunity to ride in in Hong Kong, it's it's been an ambition of mine for for a long time to to ride in Hong Kong, and yeah, I received the news this afternoon, and um, yeah, I'm just delighted to 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 get the opportunity to come over and, and ride ride there next season, and um, you know I'm going to jump at it with open arms and uh, certainly give it give it my best shot. Won't be the first time that you've ridden in Hong Kong. You rode in a Hong Kong Derby and also a QE2 Cup three years ago. What did you gain from that sort of experience here? Uh, look, I took a little bit away from, from that experience. It was, you know, I've been to Hong Kong twice um, and rode track work there for, for a week and had a little bit of a feel for, for, for the place. Um, it's, it's certainly, you know, a, a tough place to ride for, for a jockey. It's the best of the best and there's no hiding. Um, there um it's um you know it's an it's an elite racing place and um you know as i as i said it's um it's it's the best um place to ride for a rider and test yourself and i want to be there you've tested yourself in sydney for much of your career such a strong jurisdiction as far as the riders there are concerned what are your thoughts on testing yourself though on a, a weekly basis a bi-weekly basis up against the likes of jay Moreira and zach purton you know it's probably it's probably at perfect time i'm 31 years old and i feel i'm starting to hit the peak uh, of of my riding um you know when it's at an age where you can cope with you know the pressures of um, riding at um, you know the level that you need to be competing week in week out that that Hong Kong um, you know requires. It's certainly a high pressure 
you know, um, in, environment. It's, um, you know, you've got to be at the top of your game week in, week out. And I feel that my riding in Australia has been um, consistently good for, you know, a number of years now. And I feel that um, you need to be at that level to ride in Hong Kong. Um, and I think you you need to have a little bit of a, a business side of uh, of a brain to be um, delegating with owners and trainers and and trying to negotiate rides and and whatnot. And I think um, I'm quite good at that. But look, I know it's going to be a tough challenge, and uh, yeah, we'll just see see if I'm up to it. You've been able to overcome tough challenges, though, Blake. The last 12 months have been pretty up and down for you. You had a bad fall at the barrier trials at Randwick in August. Uh, just take us through your last 12 months. It hasn't been an easy 12 months for me, that's for sure. I, I broke my neck in August, and it was a pretty pretty arduous um, time to get back. Um, I had to put in, put in the hard yards to get back, but... Um, you know, as you say, I'm not um, I'm not one for you know shying away from a from a challenge and putting in the work to to get back on top of things. And um, you know, we we put in the work and we've come back. And um, you know, it's the rewards are there for for the people that put in the work. And um, you know, I'm just wrapped to be back doing what I love. And um, you know, now to be getting this opportunity. Riding in Hong Kong, I just, I'm just, I'm just stoked because you know, all that hard work that I've put in, not just over the past 12 months, but throughout my whole career, it's, you know, 16 years of, of sacrifice and, and dedication, and um, you know, it's it's now my time to be riding on the world stage, and that's where I've, I've seen, seen, seen where, seen where my, myself, where I've always wanted wanted to be, and you know. Hong Kong, this is it now, and um, I'm gonna 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 try and do my best, and hopefully, um, yeah, get get to the level where I've always seen myself. So this is certainly the realization then of a long-term dream of yours. Yes, it is. Um, you know, I've I've aspired, um, you know, to try and be like a, a Darren Beeman or a Frankie Dettori or a Mike Smith, and I've, you know worked my absolute butt off to try and get to that level and you know who knows I, I may not ever get to that but I've always tried to you know work to aspire to be like the likes of those guys and, and riders like Maria and Purton um, you know I don't feel that I'm at, at their level just yet but I'll continually work hard to try and get there and at 31 I'm starting to get get to my peak and um, you know I feel I've got 10 to 15 years of good riding left in me and Hong Kong's another stepping stone to try and get get to the absolute elite, elite level as a jockey. Well, Blake, thanks for taking the time to talk to us. Congratulations once again on the news. We look forward to seeing you here in Hong Kong in the middle of August leading in to the new racing season. Thank you. It's a pleasure. OK, thanks to Blake for his time there. Uh, Graham, he aspires to be like a Frankie Dettori or Mike Smith. He's certainly an ambitious jockey. That's one of the things I detected from that chat, Edward. Uh, a measured ambition, uh, excitement, a sort of quiet excitement, but also what I detected was a, a realism. And he's right to be realistic because, as he said, he's coming here, entering his peak years. One of the problems is we have two guys at the top of the table, Zach Purton and Joe Marrara. They are truly brilliant riders. They are both at the peak of their powers. And just behind him, we have Karis Teton and Vincent Ho, who've both had real breakthrough seasons. And they're also entering prime time. The top three in the table in Hong Kong this season have ridden more than 40% of the calendar winners. And that's when one of them, Joe Moreira, didn't start until December. So it's tough at the top, but good luck to Blake Shin. He is in for the ride of his life in the next year or two. So we've had... Well, we've just spoken to one of the new jockeys coming to Hong Kong next season. The other's Lyle Hewitson. As you said before, he's a young jockey, um, but he's achieved a lot in a short space of time. Yeah, you try to do your due diligence on young guys who you don't know very well. I've spoken to people whose judgment I respect enormously. They rave about this guy's maturity, his ability, uh, his composure, 
his work ethic, all great things to hear. He's also a, a very active and very positive on social media. That's a great thing for encouraging young fans into the game. Uh, but the key number for him is 21. He's 21 years of age. He comes from a really great pedigree. His dad was a good jockey. He comes from the South African Apprentice Academy that's produced legendary figures like Douglas White, etc. So he has a huge amount in his favor. And if he can get some momentum early on, we know about Hong Kong. Talent is essential. Contacts and opportunities are absolutely vital. If you can blend the talent with the opportunities, then there could be something really good in store for him. Well, as you say, the magic number is 21, yet he's already been the champion jockey in South Africa before and could potentially be that again this season. Well, he took over as the first apprentice to win the South African jockey's title from a guy called Michael Mouse Roberts. That was way back in 73. Now, I remember Michael Roberts as a top quality jockey winning the championship uh, back in the UK. So if he has a career that's on a par with Michael Mouse Roberts, then he has got loads to look forward to. Let's talk about some of the other implications from today's news. Joe Moreira comes back as a club jockey on a full-time basis. It's been fairly one-way traffic this season with Zach Purton out in front, but has he got a bit of competition on his hands next season? It's a spellbinding, spellbinding prospect for next season because Zach Purton has had a, a Hall of Fame season in every respect, every respect, style, quantity, quality. But Joe only arrived in December. Joe has been tied to golden handcuffs, don't get me wrong, the John Size job. But when Joe Moreira is free to roam, with that weight advantage he has, it could be a tremendous battle between the two next season. And we've also got Teton nudging them up, Vincent Ho having a great season, two high-profile new arrivals. So it looks very rosy in that respect. But Purton and Moreira could go hell for leather next season, that's for sure. As for those licensed until February as well, too, Elder de Mayer hasn't been here for too long. He gets an opportunity to continue his stay in Hong Kong. Neil Callan probably hasn't had the best of seasons or best of couple of seasons, but again, he gets an opportunity to, I guess, rebound into next season. And rightly so. N Neil Callan's got credit in the bank in more ways than one in Hong Kong. He's very popular with punters. He's had many a good season before this fairly quiet one, and he is certainly young enough, fit enough, and hungry enough to bounce back. Regan Bates and Alberto Santa will be here until at least the end of 2019. Yeah, potentially a bad break for Reagan last night with a bump at the stalls. Not sure about the extent of that injury, but a good break today. He's been thrown a lifeline. Alberto Zana has been very unlucky with injuries. He has to, uh, it's a terrible pun actually, to hit the ground running at the start of the next season and, and really get some, some wins on the board, perhaps for uh, a new trainer in Douglas White maybe. Well, he is the new trainer. We had no real news as far as the trainers were concerned from the Thursday licensing committee meeting because we'd heard it earlier on in the year. Overall, with White entering the trainer's fray, Marrera's back, Shin, Hewitson, it's going to be a fascinating season. It is, and who's Douglas going to use as his main jockey? You have to think he's going to go to the big two. But Douglas White, you can never bet on a trainer really making the grade right away. But if there's one man you would be very confident about it's him. So that it's a very significant news day today, perhaps not the drama of 12 months ago, but loads of news lines to prompt discussion among racing fans. So much to talk about then in season 2019-2020. We're still wrapping up season 2018-2019, though, and the next meeting comes up on Saturday at Sha Tin, where we've got 10 races on the programme. The trophy event is the Hong Kong Riding for the Disabled Association Cup, which is race six. If you go to the website on Friday night, you'll be able to get a full preview of the meeting with Andrew Lejeune, Paul Larry and Brett Davis. And as always, follow the latest news through Twitter at HKJC underscore racing. We've still got a bit more jockeys news to touch on, though, before we leave you on this edition of HK Direct. And it's Olivia Deleuze who took to Twitter through the week, uh, Graham, to announce after over 30 years as a jockey, He's hanging up the boots. Yeah, fairly understated tweet to announce his retirement, but absolutely nothing understated about Olivia Deleuze's career. He was riding Group 1 winners in Europe back in the early 90s, 94 green tune for Cricket Head. Big time rider in Europe for over a decade, big time rider in Hong Kong for a similar period. And not so much the hard facts of the Group 1s and the big races, the style with which he lived his life in and out of the saddle. I can't think of another rider who could carry off white trousers and a cravat. He did it just like that. I'm sure you could. I'm sure I couldn't, but it, it's, a, it's a fantastic positive story. He's had a long, wonderful career, 25 years at or close to the top of his profession, 
both in Europe and Hong Kong. There aren't many who can boast that. 571 wins in Hong Kong across 17 seasons. So we wish Olivier all the best in his retirement. And we're going to leave you with one of his finest moments in the saddle here in Hong Kong, guiding good Barbard to a third straight victory in the 2009 Hong Kong Mile. Racing to win, makes a mid-race move and Bowman goes after the leaders. Then came Alexandros, Happy Zero pulls out, Good Barba pulls out with him. We're in for a great finish. Able One heads off Egyptian Ra. Here's Happy Zero lengthening. Good Barba's trying to go with him. Fellowship's there, three off the fence. Egyptian Ra, Fellowship. Happy Zero drives at them and Good Barba. Will this be history? Yes, Good Barba swamps them. There's three in a row.